Now, it's alleged that widespread corruption carted billions of rand away from state-owned rail company Transnet. The state capture inquiry is expected to sift through 30,000 pages of evidence this week. Our reporter Aaron Bates is following proceedings and joins us now in studio. So one of the contracts mentioned today is worth 300 million rand. What's that about? So this is a contract between Transnet and Neotel to install CCTV cameras at some of the ports. Uh, and there was a major kickback to a company that's sort of loosely linked to the Gupta families over the 300 million rand deal. Let's take a listen on that. As part of that operation, an amount of 300 million rand was spent in purchasing certain network equipment from Neotel under a master services agreement. 34 million rand was paid to an entity called Homex, again as a, quote, success fee, unquote, for facilitating that contract, which was about, which was worth, as we've said, 300 million rand. A new master service agreement was signed in 2014, which again resulted in payments being made to Homex, totaling amount of 41 million rand as a success fee. The question is not whether that was a payment of an amount of money in excess of what ought to have been paid, but whether it should have been paid at all. In other words, whether the amount of 34 million rand and 40 one million rand was simply looted from the coffers of Transnet for no value whatsoever. Now, Aaron, given that Transnet scope is so broad, it made it pretty easy and a desirable target for looters. That's quite right, and a lot of people might just think that Transnet is a freight rail company. So we know that Prasa does the passenger rail side of things, and then Transnet ferries goods up and down the train network. Uh, but you're right, there is much more to it, and that means if you get your foot into the door of the various units and you've got uh, bad intentions, you have a lot of money potentially to be made. And uh, we actually heard about that as well at the State Capture Inquiry. Let's take a listen. There are two issues. The first uh, in relation to the next witness is the notification given to implicated parties. Um, and uh, although perhaps not decisive, it is very important that uh, we abide by those notices insofar as is possible. And the second that uh, Mr. Malefi has arranged this afternoon to consult with his attorneys and uh, requires that opportunity to be able to do so and will be ready at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So, of course, he's talking about the long list of people they're actually going to have to go through to hear testimony from about what happened. Yes, and as things stand now, we hear that there are going to be at least 13 people or 13 people have been set down to testify on Transnet. You spoke about those tens of thousands of documents in the various reports that were tabled today. Roughly 26,000 papers, Shahan, in various reports investigating fraud and corruption at Transnet. Those are being tabled, but of course the inquiry is not going to get through those in a week. That's humanly impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are are being tabled as context, as setting the frame uh, for all of this corruption, fraud and alleged money laundering, which is going to be unpacked. And we start, of course, with the board chair tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. Aaron Bates following the state capture inquiry.